Hello and welcome, you're joining Blue Army Radio here at Princess Park for Dartford vs Chippenham Town. The date is Saturday the 6th of November at 3pm kickoff here at the environmentally friendly Princess Park. 4,100 capacity here and it's Chippenham Town vs Dartford. I'll read the teams quickly. Starting, number one for Dartford is Dan Wilkes. Number three, Jernaid Mead. Number four, Noor Hussein. Number five, it's Connor Essam. Number six, Tom Bonner. Number seven, George Porter. Number eight, Kieran Murtar. Number 10, Dan Ro Roberts. Number 11, Jack Jeb. Number 14, A Disease. And number 19, Luke Winadio. And on the bench for Dartford, number 12, Josh Hill. Number 15, Danny Leonard. Number 16, Luke Allen. Number 17, Emmanuel Sanupe. And number 18, Michael Kedman. And for Chippenham this afternoon, number one, Will Henry. Number three, Ethan Hill. Number four, Spencer Hamilton. Number six, Will Richards. Number eight, Callum Gunner. Number 10, Dan Griffiths. Number 11, Ricky Aguiar. Number 12, Harvey Bunker. Number 13, Joe Hanks and Captain. Number 19, Luke Russ. And number 20, Harry Warwick. On the bench for Chippenham, Alfie Santos, number seven. Ololu Lowell, number nine. Number 15, the returning Alex Bray. Number 17, Steve Bayeke. And number 17, Ross Stern. We are, I believe, seven minutes away from kickoff as the media pen is being absolutely sprayed by, believably, sprinklers on the pitch. I'm actually joined with good friend Kean Ward here, who's going to provide some Dartford analysis. Yeah, hello, hello everyone uh, over down in Chippenham. Kean here. Excited for this one, Jamie. It's the first time being a Dartford fan myself. First time back at Prince's Park since, well, before COVID existed. March 2020 was my last game here. Obviously, overworking with Concord now, which is uh, an eventful one to say the least. There's never a quiet day on Canby Island. It's, it's a, that's a bit impolitely, but this is down to be, you know, a really interesting game of National League South football. Dartford, you know. The ball comes straight down the line. It's towards A disease gets the ball but it's over hit by the Dartford right back and Will Henry has his first action in the afternoon. It's interesting, it looks like Dartford obviously we're only 20 seconds in but Dartford look like they're starting with a three at the back um, with, with Connor Atom, Bonner and I think it's Jared Mead as the three centre halves but it's very it's different to what they line up on Tuesday, it was a solid four on Tuesday night with Jordan Winter playing at right back but interesting to see how, how, how they line up and if there's a difference in tactics from, from you know, this, this run of form that they've obviously had a number of losses in. A number of changes as well for the Chippenham side on a similar vein. Ethan Hill comes in for his first appearance this season, an academy player, and he's coming in at left back. It seems Alex Bray's not fully fit yet, and we know Danny Greenslade has an injury. Kieran Parcel deputised yesterday as the ball comes out towards Hill on this side. And is that going to be a foul from the referee? No. There's appeals from, from the Dartford bench for a throw in, and it is a throw in just a couple of yards in front of us. Square in the face, you know. Yeah, that? I hope not. Just hit me and not the uh, laptop I have. <laughs> Nadio looks to beat Turn Gunner, which he does, and Hanksy sends the ball into the stands. I mean, better out there than in the goal, Hanksy. Good play. Nadio again, similar position, he goes inside. Hanksy misses the ball, but it comes all the way back. Jernade Mead on the far side now. Good switch of play. Mead turns back and goes towards Tom Bonner. Then looks further across. It's a good play from Dolphin to go to Connor Essa. It's a large motorbike seems to go past the crowd. That I was not expecting that here. As Harry Warwick looks to put pressure on Tom Bonner, done all the way back to Dan Wilkes in goal, and he's just he's just waiting around with the ball. He does not look in a hurry at all. Two minutes gone, with nothing really happening. I'll be honest. Jonaid Mead. This is the same really. Dolphin were uh, you know very possession based on Tuesday night when they came to Concord. And Concord managed to do a job on them, you know, I think the, the best way to, to beat the half is to frustrate them. You know, little niggles, hunger for try to do it, lost 1-0, but, you know, that's the way to beat them. And they played a lot of ball on the floor, but they just didn't seem to break through. As long as you're well organised, know your role as a player, they're not going to cause you many issues. You didn't really have a plan B, to say the least. Ball goes long. And now it's with... I really, I, I've got my glasses on, but I really Hissed, can't, I can't see. Yeah, who said? Luke Renadio now. He's been getting the ball down the right hand side quite a lot as he looks to take on Callum Gunner. He's already beaten him a couple of times today. Tries a little step over, but Callum Gunner thwarts it. He still has the ball. And when Adio tries a little skill, it doesn't come off. And Shippenham got throwing right down in the corner. Although I am going to fear for my life because 
the ball's going to be thrown down by Ethan Hill right in front of us and if there's a 50-50 challenge that goes wrong it's going to be peace out for some of us. Also I'd like to give a shout out to Kieran Parcell if he's still listening. We do miss you mate and we hope you're ready for the next game. Here's Jack Jeb. Comes inside and Will Richards has the ball and it goes long towards Dan Griffiths. But it's really, he's missed the ball and Kieran Murtagh's there and it's gone all the way back in their own half towards Tom Bonnet who goes forward. Left hand side, Janae Mead again getting the ball quite a lot these full backs. Noah Hussain looks to drive into Wade Adiz, gets it back to Noah Hussain. Here's George Porter. Comes inside back outside to Luke Winadio just in front of us. Is Winadio going to put a ball in instead of skill this time? Yes, he does. But the ball is just as poor as that attempted skill. Shipley will have a goal kick. I will learn Dan Roberts' name, I promise. He won't just be a Dartford player. Well, when I when I did the one of the live shoots conference last season, Braintree didn't give us a team sheet. So I was just referring to their players as, you know, he's a, he's a seven for Braintree and all their fans moaning at us on Twitter. So like, you can't help it if you don't know their names. I say as a media team we've been treated pretty well by Dartford Hill, I'll give them the props to that as a header goes in and it's towards Hanksy and Ethan Hill takes a touch, was there a foul there, there wasn't, oh no, the referee blows up early for a high foot by Joe Hanks but I'd say that's a bit harsh, he didn't make contact and I believe I mean, Jack Jeff. I think anyone was really near him either as well, I thought Porter was a good foot away but I mean, we'll see how it is. Got sock tape on there as well around the ankle, yeah, it could be, who knows. It's a very good assumption to make to be fair to yeah, the ball lead. Lead. Oh, that's right. That's right in the corridor. Corridor of uncertainty. Just need another foot back. And I think, again, Tom Bonner would have been there. That's something you've always got with, with Jebby. <laughs> Sorry, Steve King. Steve King making me laugh. Um, it's one thing you always get with, with Jack Jebby. His deliveries, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, they're exactly where you want them. Isn't it? of any uh, appearances of any first team sort but I'll probably trust them more than I trust myself for this <laughs> he also did actually make appearances for Bristol City and Cheltenham so there's a lot of South West cultures here so the ball's actually come forward uh, I'm not sure who sent it long I think it might have been Luke Russ but it was Ricky Aguilar that chased the ball and Down Wilkes managed to pick it up and he's gone rightwards to Connor Essam who gets the ball back again from Kieran Murtagh start for just potentially looking to slow the game down as oh Winatio actually misses the ball and Ethan Hill wins it here's Dan Griffith goes left towards Ethan Hill who's I thought he was taken down but no Winatio did win the ball Ethan Hill left foot puts the ball into the box and it's Dan Griffith with the header Chippenham Town take the lead brilliant goal from Dan Griffith this is his first of the season I mean wow <laughs> I'd say that's a hell of a counter-attacking move from, from, from Chicken of here and I'm not sure what's going on in the middle but Wilkes has come out for it and he's obviously you know missed it or missed time to fire the ball and the old guys headed it in but it's a great counter-attacking player and you're not going to lie I think Chippenham deserved it they've, they've certainly created I think the better of the chances in the final third but Dan Griffiths there minutes, send you guys ahead and Prince's Park is, is in silence even the drum stopped <laughs> I mean, Ethan Hill did really well there. He wanted to make an interception. He was then taken out. I mean, it was a very fair challenge. He won the ball by one of the Dartford players. I, I can't really remember, I, I won't lie. One idea, I think it was, wasn't it, right? Yeah, one idea, kind of right back. So we'll cover that one. And then Ethan Hill managed to get himself up and carried straight on, left footed ball into the box, almost just dinked in towards the near post. And it's Dan Griffiths who gives Chippenham some the lead on the, I believe it's gone down as the 21st minute goal. So any Dartford fans, 21st minute for the golden goal and any one that plays to him and Luke Winadio today is going to be absolutely something. And you, see what, you see what I'm talking about with the referee always there. <laughs> There's a bang, that's a great challenge, I mean they're appealing for it, but it's got the ball, he's playing the man with him, but that was a proper, if you've ever seen a non-league challenge, that was one there, beautiful, right in front of us as well. Superb tackle, and like you said, he's been superb, uh, even here in the opening, opening 25 or so minutes. Not that Winadio, who's probably one of the most technical players with the ball at his feet, have much space at all. I mean, yeah, Luke Winadio, I uh, didn't actually get many notes on him. It's his third spell with Dartford over his career, which, I mean, even for a non-league player is quite a lot. Jack Jeb sends the ball long. That's a trademark long ball. Dan Roberts picks it up probably about 40 yards out. He goes for the shot. I mean, that's hit the top of the stand and then nearly hit a Dartford fan in the head. But that was, I mean, a good opportunity, but not very well executed from yeah, Dan Roberts. Originally signed on a Tony Berman. 
and um, yeah, I suppose. Uh, with the ball in. It's, oh, it's onto the head of Spencer Hamilton, but I think I saw a shirt being pulled there, but the referee seemed to think different. Dan Roberts knocks it past him the middle, and it's cleared out by Luke Ross. Is it another oi from Steve Steve King towards the referees? It was clear Ethan, Hall, Ethan Hill was apparently fouling Dan Roberts somehow. But uh, Luke Russell seems to have lost a shin pad, so just in front of us, he puts it back into a sock and runs back onto the pitch. Jack Jeb goes for a low drive. Nor Hussein has it on the edge of the box after it was deflected, T turns a man towards Jernade Mead. Right foot puts the ball into the box, but it's Good just ass. caught by Will Henry, and this game's starting to liven up. 31 minutes gone. Dartford nil, Chippenham Town 1. But it can cost you because a late goal can happen. Wenadio actually plays a good ball. Wenadio pulls it back towards Jack Jeb, he's going to deliver right footed but Harvey Bunker manages to get a foot and it's another wasted delivery Harry Warwick, is he being fouled by Tom Bonner? I'd say that he is here I, I, as Harry Warwick throws the ball away I mean, Tom Bonner's gotten away with a few of those just grabbing onto his man and I heard, I've heard from a couple of fans this week that Tom Bonner gets, seems to get away with a lot in this division and I think he's gotten away with one there he does, yeah, to be fair to Tom. I mean, in my opinion, and I talk to people, obviously, where I work with Concord, he's, he's probably the best centre-half in the league. You know, he, he's one of them, he wears his arm on his sleeve. He's, a, he's say, a Dartford legend nowadays. He's got a great head on him in, in both defensively and forward thinking, and that's where Jeb will be aiming his free kick. I'm not sure it was a free kick, but here, here we go with Jebby and the ball in. The ball goes in. He goes for the shot, actually. And I don't think Will Henry was expecting it, I certainly wasn't, and the ball just flies over the bar, and I mean, quick reaction time from the crowd there to stop the ball, but I think they want to speed up Will Henry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the darts a bit, I suppose it's just easy for us to darts. I mean, the, 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 the raffles and the fan, the support association, it's called the Warbler, the Warbler lottery, that's after a, a bird, the, the Darth Warbler, I think it's called it. Wins the ball. I tell you what, again. Callum Gunner really impressed me this afternoon. He's put a real sh only half hour in or so, but he's put a real shift in. Dan Griffiths, oh. left footed ball towards Harry Warwick. He tries to go back towards Dan Griffiths, but the ball didn't have enough on it. And I think that's a really wasted chance for Chippenham. He could have taken that. We're not going to get many chances in this game. We've already taken one. I think as a safety blanket, you should have taken another. Hello again to the 28 listeners we've got now. It seems to be fluctuating. I'm not sure whether that's the software we're using or everyone seems to be coming and going. But I hope you're enjoying the production as Luke Russ looks to turn his man. It goes back to Will Henry, Will Richards rather, who just sends the ball forward. Tom Bonner, header down. Murta, header up. Luke Russ nods it down towards Ricky Abriaro, who sends two men. Right footed ball towards Dan Griffiths who just enters the box. Is he going to look to bend one in the far corner? No, he's almost challenged and the ball was cleared well by, I believe it was Jack Jeb. And Spencer Hamilton heads it off Dan Roberts and Joe Hanks looks with the left footed ball. That was probably 35 yards out and I, I think that might have been on target. Ethan Hill, ball in. Tom Bonner heads it right up towards the goalkeeper, Dan Wilkes, and I wasn't sure if Dan Wilkes knew where that was going. I'll tell you what. I think it's Griffiths there, he's got to do better with it. He's got through there, like you said, we're not going to get trees for you guys back at home in Wiltshire. But I'll have a moan at my half time, don't worry about it. <laughs> As Connor Essen has got the ball and Jeb is in the centre again, he drives into the chip and a half. Oh, well, speaking of the devil, he's back. I was just moaning about you. <laughs> uh, did, did he treat you alright, guys? Was he okay? He missed a great opportunity though, Dan Griffith with a free header in the centre, he somehow missed it. Shipping him should be two up in my opinion, but I want him chance it comes to Rue. A disease heads it down! <laughs> the ball goes in and A disease is on side. I mean I just got back and it was Jack Jeff played a beautiful right footed ball. You might not actually be able to hear me now because the round of applause. Jack Jeff played a beautiful ball. Just over the top, it went just over, I think, with Richard's head. He looks disappointed with himself. And it was, it was A disease who managed to just head it past Will Henry. And I think he'll kind of regret some of the time wasting now. But the lino says he was onside. I think he probably was onside. Ricky Aguiar seems to disagree with me. But Dartford have pegged Chippenham back level. It's Chippenham, one ta Chippenham Town 1, Dartford 1 in this fixture having been sent off in the February 2020 match as along with Bantle McNulty and they were a related incident as Henry sends the ball forward Sam wins the header down and it's sent back up towards Will Richards by Sam who heads it down oh, 
Sam Roberts is in. Could he live, live? Could Dolphin get another goal? No, it's a stop by Will Henry. Yeah. Oh, he's got in the goal. Yeah. Noor Hussain gets the second for Dolphin. Two in quick succession. And I mean, Shipman Town, I think, I don't like to say it, but I think we bottled this. One nil up, two very quick goals. I mean, poor organisation at the back end as the ball was put through towards Dan Roberts, who, I mean, Dan Roberts probably should have scored, but it was a strong save by Will Henry, and it was, Noor Hussein was in the right place, right time. And we've gone from one nil up to two one down. Dartford two, Chippenham Town one. Well, if the game has ever turned so quick, it has this afternoon. Great counter attacking football for the darts. The ball played through to Roberts, and to be fair to Henry, he saved Roberts' strike superbly with a foot. And then Hussein has literally just got an empty net to pass the rebound into. I wouldn't say that's, you know, worthy of the first half. I don't think darts have been too great. I don't think either side have been too great, to be perfectly honest. But it is what it is. That's football. I'll give you your notes back because I know the darts are better than you do. But I mean, the darts are fans now in fine. Keep ball now. Steve King just orders them to go backwards. I think they just want a bit of safety before half time. But Kieran Murtagh is going to drive the ball forward. Gives it towards Luke Wernandio. Was he offside? Shipman think he was, but he don't think he was. Wernandio is going to go back, and that is the half time whistle. Shipman, I mean, I will, I will do my round up, but I will just wait until the applause as the players return into the tunnel for half time. Chippenham Town got the opening goal, 21st minute, I mean, really good work from Ethan Hill. A challenge, another firm challenge, and then a beautifully left foot. Right, so we're underway, Joe Hank sends the ball up towards the left-hand side and gives uh, Dartford a throw-in. That's one tactic that you see quite a lot in football these days, just from the kick-off, you go back, you go out wide. What, what do you think of it, Kieran? Because I'm not a fan, personally. It reminds me of, it reminds me of rugby, you know, you're playing for... Playing for an area where there is, I mean, I, could have, I should have gone to watch England play this afternoon against Tonga, but I decided to come here instead. Not sure why. Um, but yeah, it's like you know, kicking a touch, playing for possession, playing for playing for, for, for an area rather than trying to keep the ball. As Spencer Hamilton clears the ball down right towards us here, and it's Janaid Mead left hand side gives it towards goal scorer, and at the minute match winner Nur Hussain. I can't actually see Steve King is blocking my view of what's happening. In a fun one, I've always noticed being out, you know, I've watched Arthur for 15 or so years here, is that the end they're shooting this half is always the one they seem to score more goals in. Towards the car park end of the ground is the one where there's usually more goals scored. We'll, we'll see how that goes compared to, to the first half. But it's a decent second half. It fits us. I'm hoping it's a bit more maybe open than it was the first, but I certainly think Chippenham have got to go at it the first few minutes, really put Dartford in their place. And they've won a corner. Yeah, it was a ball forward by, I think it was a, a free kick delivered by uh, Joe Hanks or Spencer Hamilton down the line. And uh, Harry Warwick got the best. Spencer Hamilton's up from the back. And Joe Hanks is hopefully going to put it on one of their heads and then into the back of the net. Steve King knows where it's going to go. As the ball goes low. Towards Spencer Hamilton, who misses the ball. Whether that might have been intentional and Harry Warwick just leant back and put the ball over the bar. It's actually hit the only triple and flag in the ground. But it's a goal kick to Dartford after two minutes and I mean we've seen that before in this half the little run by um, Spencer Hamilton in the near post and then the dummy last time it was Ricky Aguilar too fast I don't have my glasses on that is why Kira Murta loses the ball Joe Hanks left footed sends it long towards Ricky Aguilar who looks to chase it down but it's just a little bit too far this Wyndham Town Loney and Dan Wilkes distributes it out to the right hand side with Lucas Luke Willandio who then sends it forward and A disease just nearly comes together with Will Henry, but the Chippenham Town shot stopper manages to get there and deliver it to Harvey Bunker, right hand side, sends it long towards the media pen. <laughs> but it just managed to hit a concrete wall and not our laptop. Janaid Mead ahead of me. Keen, you should have asked him then if you played in the Champions League. That would have been, have been, that would have been a good been opportunity. Him, so. I haven't found anything yet, so I think someone's been feeding me some lies or has been missing form. But he says he made no appearances for the Arsenal first team. Tom Bonnet sends it, I, I think uh, the linesman says nowhere close, but I think from my angle, it did go out. That's what Dan Griffiths is protesting, but here's, uh, I can't remember his name, it's Joe Hanks, it's a Luke Orlandio, 
we keep mentioning him, but he does get the ball down the right-hand side and looks to drive and carve Chippenham open quite a lot as he looks to go past Gunn. It's a good ball into the box, but perhaps a little bit too high for a disease, and it was a little bit too far behind the Chippenham line and the line to be fair to Juan Adio, he's playing a, a position that he's not really used to. I mean, it's been owned by Jordan Winter, who's sat behind us, so I assume he's got an injury or something, but Lucas is giving something going forward today, I mean. Gloucester City man. And I think Luke Ross sends it forward, but Conor Assam wins the header and it's touched down by Kieran Murtag and the ball just evades Dan Roberts as it goes towards Harvey Bunker who sends another long ball up. But it really comes to nothing, Luke Ross sends it forward. Again, Ricky Aguiar with a good first touch down, Rick Griffiths goes to ground after Janaid Mead pushed him over and I saw it, the referee saw it. Everyone in the crowd behind me didn't see it, Steve King didn't see it. But it was to push over. Right, the next couple of weeks, Hanks right foot sends the ball in. It's high, and it's just a little bit too far as well for Dan Wilkes. There's a, there's a shout from the Dartford bench, something to do with six. So I think they're protesting that Will Richards did something wrong. But here's the Dartford number six. It's Tom Bonner, prolific record scoring against Chippenham. Hopefully he doesn't get Dartford's third in this match. 55 minutes gone. 10 minutes into the second half. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast, uh, but you're probably not enjoying the result, but you might be now, as Ricky Aguiar goes long towards Joe Hanks, who's gonna drive. Oh, and that's a foul. That's a foul by Tom Bonner, and the referee going for a card. I think it's gonna be yellow. It was really a late challenge from Tom Bonner, who protests his innocence, as Hanks dribble past one, dribble past two, look to go past Tom Bonner to make it a third, but Tom, Tom Bonner brought him down, and. Chippenham have a free kick, probably three yards outside the edge of the box, I think. But Hanks might take this as Tom Bonner is booked. I did say, didn't I, that you know, if you want to really have a chance of getting back in this game from a Chippenham perspective, you, you've got to go at Dartford in the second half, early doors. That's exactly what, what Chippenham have done. And to be fair, if this goes in, it looks like it's a bit queer or I can't have, the guy from Swindon, I can't remember how you pronounce his last name, but Aguiar. Aguiar. <laughs> what a cool name, to be fair to him, we'll give him that. Um, yeah, he looks like he's eyeing it up. Could set us up for a fascinating 35 minutes or so if this goes in. It's a great opportunity to be fair for Chippenham here to score and, and level it up again. Bunk has already scored a free kick this season in the pool in the FA Cup. That one's from a little bit further out, but this one hopefully can go into the goals as a 4 5 man, 5 4 man dart for the wall as Gunner looks to drag Renardia out of it. It's a tall dart for the wall, he's going to struggle probably to get it up and down over the wall and into the back of the net. It's going to be Aguiar, free kick for Chippenham. Goes underneath the wall oh, and it goes into the back of the net. Ricky Aguilar with another goal for Chippenham. Free kick that is. Very often do you see a direct free kick go into the net. I think every Dartford player, including the goalkeeper, is expecting it to go under the wall, over the wall rather. There's an inquest. Tom Bonner and Dan Wilkes having a bit of a conversation, but Chippenham don't care as Ricky Aguilar gets his second goal for Chippenham. Chippenham's second goal of the afternoon, and currently they've pulled it back. What a game we're seeing here, Kian. No, I'm going to say I called that. That's a great free kick. Low, driven into the corner. I mean, you were saying about it going over the wall. I did have a sneaky suspicion that's where he was going to go. Wilt has you know, got a hand to it. He's probably going to say should you play that. Um, it's hard for me. I really like Dan Wilt as a keeper. I mean, he was um, our, our substitute keeper at Wembley. You know, because you know Concord got to Wembley. Um, not that we go on about it at all. Um, but he was our substitute keeper there. Really nice fella. Goalkeeper should probably be playing higher up the level, higher up the pyramid, in my opinion. But and also without manager Mike Cook, who's taken or not taken out today, but he's not very well today. So we wish him the best if he's listening to us. As the ball flies over us and over Tom Bonner, as Dan Griffiths looks to charge as the ball is shoved towards Jane, Janine Mead, and Nor Hussein goes past Ricky Aguiar, who tries to pull him back. The referee plays advantage, and here goes. George Porter drives forward, Wernadio again, far side of us, right back, and he's just about kept the ball in, but he's short, and Aguiar's going to chase, there's a bit of a shoulder barge between him and Kieran Murtagh, Murtagh, there we are, that's the right one, and it's back towards Dan Wilkes, really end-to-end -end stuff, it goes from goalkeeper to goalkeeper, and it's a quick flowing game, right no ball, the ball just holds up in the bitter wind we have here at Prince's Park, and Dan Griffiths, wins the flick on and then tries to flick it on towards Aguiar but Tom Bond is there to clear it long and Dan Griffith, uh, not Dan Griffiths, Harry Warwick loses the ball. Darth have the ball in their own half, now in the Chippenham half as Nor Hussain drives forward. 
a great run there from Lucien. And here's Dan Morris, really the man with the assist for the second goal as he puts the ball in. And it's Spencer Hamilton there to put the ball out. He's still on the floor. I'm not sure there could be a bit of panic now. He just, I think, took one to an uncomfortable area. You better not be playing it. We'll pull someone, down the commentary. Someone sent me some coins, I think. I'm just giving up to score with the, the goals from across the game. There's quite a few interesting results with the corner yeah, coming in. With the ball in, good header away by Will Richards. I mean, if the ball was just a little bit higher, it would have gone to the number six counterpart in Tom Bonner. Another ball in by Jack Jeb. This time it's towards Dan Roberts who chests it down and he goes past Will Richards, but not enough on it to keep it in as the ball goes out. Nor the same. He turns a man, turns again as he scythed down Ricky Aguiar. It's the man who did that. I couldn't really see it as, again, due to the angles here, Steve King was stood directly in where the foul happened. Aguiar protests his innocence, but the referee doesn't choose to book the Swindon Town Loney, just put a tick against his name. 2 2 here. The only yellow card really of note was uh, Tom Bonner's, which was for the free kick that Ricky Aguiar managed to sort away. That was the only yellow card, wasn't it? I believe it is the only so yellow card. The only yellow card of no, it's the only yellow card. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself there. <laughs> Bath for winning. Oh, that walks to the dismay of Chippenham fans. Bath Town, <laughs> Bath City rather, are winning. Ball into the box, but it's short by Jack Jeff. That's the first poor delivery we've seen from him today. As Aguiar managed to pluck that out of the sky, and it's sent long by Harvey Bunker towards Dan Griffiths. And it's sent out by Luke Willandio, who had to do something there, or Dan Griffiths would have been one on one with a chance to put Chippenham in front. Stuff he's had to do, and I think he's actually done it very well. Is chipping him out of the chance here, and he's a weary again. Aguiar has a lot of space, but it came across his weak, onto his weaker left foot, and it was kind of shanked wide. You don't blame him for having a go there, but maybe could have got his head up, look for Dan Griffiths on the right, or Harry Warwick on the left. But there's still plenty of time, probably 27 minutes left in this match for either Chippenham or Dartford to grab a winner. Inside toward A disease. Here's Jack Jeff. He's got a lot of time and space, plays a neat little ball to Dan Robert, who gets past Bunker and it's in towards Junaid Mead. Ball into the box and it's just headed over the bar. Will Henry had to check himself to make sure it wasn't going in, but it did go over the bar. I believe it was Noor Hussein who headed it. As Will Henry struggles to get the ball off of the roof of the net, and that's why you heard the cheers from the Dartford fans behind the goal. 64 minutes gone here. Oh, I'm just getting some gossip from the Concord group chats. <laughs> so I'm going to try and look for some of my stats. One of the interesting stats I did find about this game was, uh, I believe this labelled the match for the new bosses a couple of times. I mean, Steve King's first match in charge of Dartford was in October 2019. And the first game he played here at Princess Park was against Chippenham Town. I think Chippenham Town actually came out winners in this game. It's Dan Roberts heads the ball forward, but Will Richards kicks up over his own head. Ricky Aguiar wins the ball and plays a good ball towards Harry Warwick. But it's just over here by Aguiar. And Harry Warwick did a really good run there. As Harry Warwick now, Jernaid Mead sends him to the shops and back. Jack Jack. You know what, Kingy's had some really good shouts here this second half. The line over in front of us. I mean, it's like front of us now, but he's been very poor, you know, he's broken through there. He is offside by about four or five yards. Lino's flag has nothing. I did notice that. You can, you can notice the annoyance of, of the, the dark bench here in front of us. And this is what Steve King is. I don't know if any of you watch his interviews. Um, quite a vocal man, as everyone will know, King E. But I spent five minutes last weekend blaming the loss to Dorking Wanderers on the refereeing's decisions. He's very critical of the refereeing and the officiating that has been going on in the National League South this season. To be fair, he's got a point. It's been poor from my view as well, but. I mean, we'll leave it at that. Many Chippenham fans will point out the refereeing this season not being great, but it goes every way. All sides really have it. Aguiar chases down a loose ball from Bunker, but it's going to be back to Noor Hussein. Is he going to go back towards Dan Wilkes? Yes, he does. And Chippenham have some time to reset at the back, and the front men have time to press forward. We hope you all enjoy this broadcast because it's, it's been enjoyable for me. I think it's been enjoyable for Keen. It's been enjoyable for all behind the scenes. And um, it's won't be the only dulcet voice you'll be hearing. You'll have Simon Lawrence is a good commentator, it's Bernadio again down the right hand side, ball into the box but it's over here, I think Junaid Mead might be able to get onto it, as he does just in the corner, we're looking through a crowd of, I mean coaching staff, so I can't really see, I think Noor Hussein has the ball, is he going to deliver the ball into the box, it's come out, Jack Jeb, good reverse ball, and it's cleared by I think Will Richards, 
and Joe Hanks has the ball. Sends a curling ball, that's a good ball, to the right-hand side. It's um, Harry Warwick that chested the ball and went out. Hanks' ground and sends Lord Hussein out wide. That's a curling, beautiful ball. Great touch from Manadio across the box. Played away again by Hamilton. He's done that four or five times now. <laughs> Hussein, he's going to play a little ball, Wenadio goes back to Hussein, is he going to hit it left footed, yes he does but it's blocked, it's hit, oh great save by Will Henry, that's a stunning save, Henry goes low and hard to his right, that's where he thought the ball was going, it took a big deflection on the way through I think and he just hit the Chippenham man's feet, Chippenham man's feet and went over the bar, Dots will have another corner here, 68 gone here at Princess Park. And this game's going to get really interesting. Yes, exactly what you want. 23 minutes to go and it's all a play for here. It's a great ball in from Jed. It's headed just over. SM tries, goes for the precision effort. Aim just side-footed it. Chested it down, side-footed it into the top. Jack Jerk to take, I think, what will be his 10th or 11th corner of this game, you've got to think. God knows, I was looking at the Concord group chat and the scores from the National League South East Bourne, 2 0 up against the Chelsea. Jeff with the ball in, but it's headed away by Dan Griffiths. Headed back in by Noor Hussein, cleared by, I believe, Will Richards. And Rusty plays a good ball forward up towards Aguiar, but Mead shepherds it and Wilkes clears it long. It's a good touch by Warwick, but just bounced off the floor awkwardly. And uh, Connor Hassan heads it forward, Will Richards then clears it down towards Noor Hussein, literally right in front of us. You might be able to hear the ball bouncing across the surfaces. I mean, I think the players just aren't really used to it. It's a lot of balls are being overhit along this wet surface here in Kent. Jack Jeb driving yet again, but it's a poor ball. Ethan Hill manages to intercept. Harry Warwick waits on the ball. Here's Kira Murta. Noor Hussain out again. Wenadio. He delivers a floating ball into the box. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. I think it was Harvey Bunker. I, I, I probably should have got a whack clearance on it to send it out, but he just knocks it down towards Will. He's ventured back. Warwick came off for. The guy I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> o Olu Luang, he apparently would like to go by. So Liverpool and Rangers, if you're listening, he's apparently been linked to in the week. How am I saying it again? Luang. Luang. That's what I said. I said Luang. There you go. There you go. I got it right. <laughs> Jack Jeb. Ball into the box. Oh, I'm not sure who that's hit, but it's bent. Oh, it's hit the post, and the ball's gone in. Number 14 for Dartford. It's Ada Z to get his second of the game. And there's an inquest. Dan Roberts is down in the goal. He looks to be hurt. I'm not sure what happened there. I believe it was Kieran Moto trying to bend the ball. And it hit the post, hit the back of Will Henry. I, I can't really remember what happened. Kian, do you know what happened? Right, Mead crossed it in, was cleared out of Murtar. Shot, I think, that he was saved by Henry. Pushed out back in the play. Well, I think he's at the post and one or Aziz, sorry, is in there. Just a solid home. You know what? Very similar to Dartford's second goal. Was saved by Henry and fell out comfortably to one of the players. This time he was Ali Aziz with his second goal of the afternoon. I think his 11th of the season for Dartford in the National League. He's up there as one of the top goal scorers. I think that physio guy on the sideline with the earpiece. He seems to think that he's been told by the physio on that side that Wanadio is going to be coming back on which means Danny Leonard is going to be coming on, at least that's what it looks like. Josh Hill plays the ball forward, but it hangs up, and Will Richards heads it long. There's Harvey Bunker in here tell. And Luke Russ heads it, but it's only as far as Noor Hussein. Outside of the ball towards Ada Z's. he might look for his hat-trick as he enters the box. But it's a good challenge by Harvey Bunker. Jack Jeb plays it down the line towards Junaid Mead, but it bounces off of Will Richards, who gets it back and clears it long. It's towards his Josh Hill again, and if what Keane said about him having a him having a baby with his partner in midweek, we wish him well and we congratulate him in this for the creation of a family. Here's Tom Bonnet, right foot, it's sensible forward. It's only as far as Will Richards who chests it down. And he's then charged down by Adesis, but Adesis was actually offside. 
Wizards in his last club before Dartford being Yeovil Town and he's represented England at the under 16 and under 18 level so he's got some calibre in his youth has he got calibre in his age now let's find out it's the ball with number seven Alfon Santos he didn't help it's a ball into the box now but it's headed away and it's back out I'm excited to see what Sanuko does in his last few minutes um, he was a trialist, I think, trialled in a few games in pre-season, didn't sign him. Trialled in a game against Leighton Orient and impressed, and Kingy signed him. I think he's one of the ones that he might loan out to one of the lower levels or another team leagues. Ball comes in, a great the ball into the back! He's heading into the back of the net! It's Luke Ross! It's Luke Ross's first chip of the toe goal! And he runs down towards the corner flag! Oh, the chip of them! It's 3-3 in the last minute! Dorford look disappointed! And it's Luke Ross's first Chippenham goal. Ola Lawal, who's been scouted in midweek by Liverpool, delivered a beautiful ball, and Luke Ross was latching at the far post. The man from Bristol has levelled in here at Kent. Dorf for three, Chippenham three. Oh, Jesus. Wow. This game has had everything. Wowee. And I mean, that was a superb ball in. Somehow he's got a free head at the back post. And it's a great head. <laughs> Jamie is going mental sat beside me. You know what? Chippenham deserve that. They, in all honesty, they deserve the three points. And hopefully, with 15 seconds to go, there's going to be four or five added on, no doubt. This is going to be one hell of a finish here in front of, I think, a thousand and six have, have come down to Prince's Park this afternoon. And for the BT camera in the corner, they've, they've already been interrupting that game quite a lot. But with five or so to go, the, I mean, part of my interesting input from the Dartford guy apologies thanks. Kian thanks you've been relative what's his name uh, Chip 54 so right, I'll see you later in the season when Concord visit I'll, I'll buy you a pint is that thank the ball you for that comment in Ooh. as Harvey Bunker had a free kick on the halfway line sent a bending ball in and it nearly snuck away in so I'm not sure who that was I think it was Joe Hanks tried to take a cynical foul on the halfway line but the referee plays on as the ball's oh, delivered wow. into the box oh. I'm not sure who was that? Ian, who was that? Danny Leonard. I mean, is that Will? Danny Leonard, yeah. Henry with one end of a fingertip on that. That was wow. Superb ball here. An even better meet with it. Dartford here, the corner. Everyone forward. Bar, Janae, me. Hill, this, Enna, Essen, Bonner. Ball this comes will in. be it. It's the ball's delivered into the box. What a save again! The ball comes into the box and Will Henry with a fingertip as the full time whistle goes here. Dartford players dropped to their feet. They knew that victory was so quickly into their grasp. But an 89th, 88th minute goal from Luke Russ breaks Dartford's hearts here in Kent. Chippenham Town 3, Dartford 3. What a game we have just seen.